Wireless has freed us from the burden of cords and cables and given us unprecedented mobility. And it was all great until we heard comments like, yeah, video. Thanks, John. But you know what? He's right. Video is a huge strain on wireless. I mean, look at these requirements. I love my 11N. It is fast, but innovation marches on. The demands will never stop increasing. So we need something faster or it's back to wired. Because now that we've tasted that freedom, there ain't no going back. Chill out, all right? We've got an answer. We wouldn't be doing this on video. <laughs> well, that's where the 802.11ac comes in. AC is an emerging standard coming out of the IEEE. It's VHT, or very high throughput. This means it operates below six gigahertz with modes of operation for a maximum multi-station throughput of at least one gig and a maximum single link throughput of at least 500 meg. Of course, your mileage may vary based upon product once they start coming out. But the standard requires every station to support a PHY data rate of 290 meg or faster and your middling device is around 850 meg. High-end devices can reach up to 1.3 gig and that's just the first generation of 11AC. Now understand that 11AC doesn't replace 802.11n. It actually builds on top of all the breakthrough advancements of n, which really streamlines the standard process with just a few tweaks. All right, well the real question becomes, where is this fifth generation wireless getting all this new speed? I mean, just what are these tweaks? All right. Well, the first thing we did was move away from the crowded interference prone 2.4 gigahertz band and go directly to five gigahertz where we have more room. Exactly. Now, with that extra breathing space, we can widen the channels to 80 megahertz, which gives us 234 data subcarriers. That's more than double the 108 we had with 11N. Well, this AC standard has even an option to bond two of these channels together for 160 megahertz. I mean, that's ludicrous speed. 11AD must be plaid speed? With tweaks to RTS-CTS, this wider bandwidth allows us to transmit more data efficiently by shutting the transmitter down sooner to decrease power usage, which translates to both speed and battery life improvements. But let me tell you about one of my favorite features of 11AC, multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, or MoMimo. 11AC doubles our spatial streams from four to eight. With this and MoMimo, we can accomplish some really cool things. Now, for example, instead of one frame for one receiver, we can send multiple simultaneous frames to multiple receivers. Exactly. MooMimo is switch-like technology versus 11N's single-user MIMO, which is more hub-like technology. This means an AP with four antennas can send one stream to three devices downstream at the same time. You see, 11AC honed beamforming to a single explicit method, beamforming with feedback. The 11AC transmitter sends a special sounding frame to the receiving device asking for feedback. The receiving side returns the beamforming matrices to the transmitter for effective signal shaping. No more multiple methods to cause chipset confusion. One method to rule them all. Beamforming is a powerful tool for increasing link budget and extending reach if implemented. Just don't be surprised if you see gains of at least five decibels across your SNR range. Well, 802.11ac brings even more advances to 11n. Features like higher order modulation, 256 QAM up from 64 QAM and 11n. Heck, that's a 33% speed bump right there. Speaking of modulation, coding scheme zero through seven, fully supported. Fast Fourier transform up to 512. That's a quantum leap from 128 and 11N. And a new set of PPDUs, procedural protocol data units to support the new VHT preamble, improve automatic gain control for MIMO, auto detection, I could go on. Before you ask, yes, 11AC is backwards compatible with other 802.11 wireless technologies, and there is no new greenfield preamble to make life more difficult. Yeah, wireless innovations are moving so fast that the IEEE actually ran out of letters, so they had to start over. Now let me make something clear. Increased throughput requires change in at least one of three areas. You could do higher order modulation schemes. All right, you could do wider channel bandwidth or more spatial streams. 802.11 AC is not available yet. Now when it does come out, it'll be in waves with the 80 megahertz improvements, 256 QAM, and likely beam forming first, and the rest of these tweaks we talked about soon after. Now stop one second, okay? Let's make sure we all caught that because 11 AC is the pretty new shiny standard way out in the distance. It's nice to see the vision, but we all want speed right now. And I guarantee you 11N is ready to blow your socks off and you can roll it out right now. Operators are standing by. 
We're proud of 11N. In fact, Cisco has uniquely maximized the 802.11N spec with ClientLink 2.0, improving throughput and coverage. Clean air, protecting against RF interference, and these 11N APs are ready to migrate your ABG clients for all new levels of wireless performance and quality, okay? Cisco and a number of other companies are going to continue working with the IEEE in defining these amazing standards, which reminds me, click on over and make sure you're not missing out on any of these answers you need today. Go ahead. Did you click?